Hello, Derek Bedwell here again, working on my DRZ writing skills. Anyways, I had a quad. It was actually a Honda Foreman. Oh, for about a year, and I never really rode it that much. I had it up here, and I thought I would ride it around the hills here quite a bit. But as it turned out, all I ever did is I just rode it up to my neighbor's house if they were having a party or a barbecue or. Maybe in the snow, I'd do some donuts out in the cul-de-sac, but, you know, I never really rode it that much, so I ended up selling it a couple months ago, and took the exact money I sold it for, $2,900, and I bought a 2009 uh, Suzuki DRZ 400S, and I've actually been riding this a lot more, far, far more than I ever rode that little quad. Um, but part of the reason is it's just so much damn fun riding this motorcycle that I just always want to jump on it in the quad. You know, it was okay. We took a, you know, a couple, rode it up and looked at the colors once, but like I said, I hardly ever used it. And it just wasn't that fun. Plus, you know, I never quite figured out what the tipping point was on that thing, so I never quite trusted it. So I just really, really didn't do that much on it. But... Now that I've had the DRZ, I've bought it, no, oh, it's mid-December now, I bought it, oh, uh, I've had it a couple months, and I realize now that my hardest part is riding up and down steep hills. So I've been riding around the neighborhood and riding up in the dirt roads around here, but it turns out the best, steepest, most challenging practice hill for me, actually, is this hill right next to my house. And so I can ride around and I can just go up and down the hill and practice. I've run it, oh, probably how many times? Eight or nine times now. And so today I'm just going out and I'm just going to ride up and down the hill, just trying to improve my skills and trying to get better at riding. So I've just ridden around down below. I'm at the meadow down below my house. And the hill goes up. There's a, it starts, you go around an electrical box, and then there's a real steep, loose part. And then there's a, kind of a single track for maybe 100 yards. And then it goes up around a hill. And then there's a, another really loose, steep, the, probably the steepest part of the hill before we get back up to the cul-de-sac. And here I am kind of starting up. This is my first run around the electric box. This part's pretty steep, real rocky, but real loose too. And then I kind of come around here. There's a bank turn right here that I always try to hit. Um, and now here I can get some speed. It's kind of a straight, almost a single track part. And right now we're hitting the, the steepest part of the hill. And the steepest, it's real rocky, there's loose kind of baseball, softball sized rocks. And then towards the top, I uh, get back into a little single track and then I bounce up into the cul-de-sac. But anyways, today I'm just gonna be running it, oh, I don't know, as many times as I can. And I'll just uh, kind of show you my progression as I'm running these hills. Um, hope you enjoy the video. One thing I've noticed is when I'm going downhill, I've always had more trouble going down than going up. Um, going down, I just, if I put my foot on the rear brake, I'm, I just can't put my right foot down because I don't have a brake to stop with. And I've eventually learned that if I just keep it in first gear and I keep the bike gear down, then I can use the gearing to slow me down um, without having to put my foot on the brake. And I just, and originally I wouldn't even touch the front brake, but now I've feathered a little bit with, you know, just, um, just or just brake lightly so I won't skid out the front tire. And I'm getting better and better at going downhill, but I'm still not as confident because you tend to, if you get in trouble, you might be going a little faster, or sometimes it's harder. I end up putting my feet down more when I'm going down the hill. But that's why I'm working on going up and going down, because uh, for me, going down is just as difficult. Going up, I can give it a little more gas and stand up on the pegs and just feel better about it. Um, anyway, so here, this is kind of my run out here. Um, I can, there's a little bit of a single track. When I do the single track, I try to just kind of, kind of go up, go on a little loop and come back without putting my foot down, generally standing up on the pegs. Um, and 
it's kind of, it's good balance practice too for me just getting comfortable on the bike knowing that the bike will pretty much stay upright and if, and if the faster i go the more the easier it is for me not to put my foot down but it's uh it's kind of a dribble it's kind of a different type of training too Yes, one thing about the bike that I'm riding is it's a DRZ 400S. And the S stands for street, meaning it's got all the turn signals and the headlights and the taillights and things like that. But what it also means is that it's geared for the street. So this bike will actually do 75 or 88. I've never had it over, much over 70 because with the full-on knobby tires I've got, it tends to wobble quite a bit. But what it also means is that when you're climbing hills, uh, I wanted a little more grunt, a little more torque. And also when I'm going downhill and I want to kind of break using my gearing, I, I, I need a, a lower gear. So what I did was swap out the front gear, which was normally a 15 tooth front sprocket. And now I've got a 13 tooth front sprocket. And I did not have to uh, shorten the chain or anything I just uh, there's a cam on the back wheel and I just uh, stretched out the back wheel a little farther back using that cam and now I can keep it in first gear and it'll hold my speed much better so I don't need to brake as much but also if you notice when I'm going up the hills it's kind of it's like a tractor um, no matter how low I get the RPMs uh, I just hit the gas and it just takes off even on these steep hills like this and it's a it's given me a lot more confidence just going up and down these hills because I know going down if I'm in first I just keep it in gear I'm not going to be going too fast because it'll hold my speed at maybe 12 or 14 miles an hour depending on how steep the hill is the drawback of this is that my top speed has been reduced by probably 10 miles an hour brush guards on my um, into my handlebars uh, and they're good for a couple of reasons but I don't know if you noticed but a couple of these runs I'm going flying into the trees <laughs> just because I'm trying to cut the corners close and it smacks into my camera but it's also smacking in pretty hard into my uh, into my hands too but the other added thing is every time I drop it it's falling on the handlebars either you know, nine times out of ten, it's falling on the clutch because I tend to fall on my left side, and so the brush guard on my left side, it's getting it's getting pretty scratched and beat up, but it has protected my clutch from probably getting bent or just getting smashed pretty hard. And I think it actually looks a little bit better, anyways. And if it's cold out, it's gonna block a little bit of wind. But basically, for me, it's something I pretty much needed to do. Yeah, on this fourth run, I'm kind of sitting up, going up, and I'll give it a little bit of gas here coming around this uh, power ball, the power box. And the back end's just sliding all over the place. And I kind of hit a brush on the right side and put a push up here on the left on my hand guards. But now I'm standing up on the pegs. I don't know if that's making my back end too loose because it's sliding around like it was doing back there. But on some of my runs, I've had the front tire dig in and just dart me off the path, off the trail to the left, like into a bush or something. And at other times, I've been going, riding up, standing on the pegs. My back end is just sliding around, and it'll slide off to the left, and I go flying off the trail onto the right. But usually on the right, I've managed to be able to hang on to it and ride around the bushes and keep going up to the top. But 
I'm not sure. Maybe I should try sitting down to get more weight on the back tire and less um, weight on the front tire so it doesn't dig in. So that will give me the benefit of front tire not digging in, the back tire digging in better. But on the other hand, the bike is bouncing around so much on these big rocks. Because like I said, there's softball sized rocks scattered all the way up here. And it's kind of bouncing around. It reminds me of like driving a jet ski or something because I'm kind of keeping it on track and I'm picking my line trying to stick to my line but it keeps continually throwing me off my line and that's what I need to work on I'll have to ask my friend Moto Mike who's a very experienced dirt bike rider whether or not I should be sitting down I mean I know it's probably more difficult to be riding a hill sitting down and I prefer to be standing almost all the time on the bike I just feel more comfortable doing that but I'll, I'll have to figure that one out. Super loose down here. Lots of big rocks. And that stunting there is it's pretty massive. And they keep, they're not letting you turn it off. But anyways, I crashed, but I crashed into a tree. Okay, I'm gonna have to get out of there. Put that down. Okay. I wanna kick I kicked my, my turn signal off. I gotta tape that on today. Lose it. I kicked it off the other day. Swinging my leg on that bike. Believe it or not. <laughs> this foot, yeah. The thing's like almost a foot off the ground. So if I go on that side, the bike's really leaning over before I put weight on it. Yeah, one thing you'll notice is as I hill climb like today, I've done it five times, I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna do it one more time because I didn't want to end the day on a non-clean run. But you can see the trail's getting really beat up, especially the part where just right back there. And all the rocks are getting loose and it's throwing dirt around. And so, I mean, the good thing in a way, you kind of warm up and as you're warming up, it's getting harder and harder because you're tearing it up because that back tire is getting around. And, in fact, I just talked to my friend Moto Mike, and he was saying what you really need to do is when that back tire starts spinning out, rather than just kind of gun it up like I've been doing, just let off real quick, just so it, so it grabs uh, and gets a, a good grip on the dirt and it's not spinning anymore, and then just give it gas again. So I guess part of it is you want to be running fast enough so you can let off but still maintain your speed. So this is my sixth run of the day, the last one. I'm trying to get a clean run out of here. I'm coming up to the bottom, kind of blue spot, and you can see here I'm on the right, the back tire skids all the way out and it just pushes me all the way over to the left, but I managed not to go flying into the tree this time, I'm keeping it up, and then um, just kind of heading up the, tra the trail, and you can hear that the motor is it's not working too hard, but it's doing pretty good. The only thing I did differently this time is on the top, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm, well you can't tell, but I'm sitting down now and just to try to see how it goes and I think I did put my foot down once or twice going up stay tuned for further episodes of Derek Bedwell's Tough Old Men of Action adventure series this is Derek signing off